They look like us, talk like us, even seem to think like us. And yet they are not. Human clones, complete biological duplicates. Could they soon be living among us? According to some researchers, they already are. Multiple whistleblowers have testified that human cloning was developed by highly classified black budget military projects. Since 38, we've been making clone people. Could some of your favorite entertainers have been secretly replaced with clones? What about politicians or world leaders? Welcome to a brave new world of human cloning, where complete duplicates of anyone living or dead can be created to order. Have I met a clone? Yeah, I think I met some clones before. See? Really? So there's clones amongst us. Now, with stunning new scientific breakthroughs, and several celebrities, including Nicki Minaj and B.O.B., tweeting about human cloning, what was once relegated to the realm of science fiction now appears to be a reality. It's time to take a closer look at human cloning. In 1997, researchers in Scotland created worldwide controversy when they announced the successful cloning of the first mammal, Dolly the sheep. Cloning, cloned from an adult sheep in a laboratory. The first adult mammal to be successfully cloned. The news was that scientists in Scotland had successfully cloned a sheep in a laboratory. If a lamb, why not a man? Our... The front page of Time magazine asked, will there ever be another you? January 24th, 2018. Scientists at the Chinese Academy of Sciences and Institute of Neuroscience in Shanghai announced the first successful cloning of a rhesus monkey, breaking a key barrier to the development of human clones. But is this achievement really the first of its kind? It is generally accepted that classified government research projects are typically two or three decades ahead of their open source equivalents, meaning the technological and scientific advancements made by the shadow government are roughly 30 years ahead of what is available to the general public. Oh, now you know I'm going about cloning. Cloning techniques, uh, since 38, we've been, 1938, they've been making clone people. There's eight countries making clones. I have a doctor friend okay, and all he does is treat you, the clones. Where do you get your information? I get it from some of the people that are willing to come forth and they talk to me because they hope I'll put the information out because they, they always got two people following them and they may be killed. If I start talking about cloning too much, the people that get involved into that uh, you disappear. So I don't go into too many more details, but there are inform there is information that's available. Uh, if you guys can rent a video. Uh, the boys from Brazil rent it because in it it gives you the exact way it, uh, how our government's been making people. Really? Yeah, different method. I mean, making people meaning temporary people? No, walking, talking ones. Meaning through genetics? You're not talking about that? Well, let me tell you. Let me. Uh, the movie shows it, but I'll share it with you right now. All right. All I need to do is take two cells off of your body, yours. Uh huh. We give them a small electrical charge. I'm just going to act like a fertilized egg. If I got a fertilized egg, all I need is a receiver in order to make it. So they were hypnotizing women, you know, said they were in, being invaded by aliens. And the fetus starts growing, right? It needs food. Well, they can use cows and sheep, too. It's again, a food source. That's all we need. After about 14 weeks, all of a sudden, that fetus is gone. Because they've learned to take, that's when the fetus starts developing its own blood supply. Then they've used a pituitary hormone extract that they have, which accelerates the being that grows. I knew that in 1996 the BBC reported secret human cloning had gone on five years before uh, in places like South Korea, England, and other areas. But you were able to dig up a Time Life magazine article. What year is this from? 1965. And in here they, they've got photos of uh, human clones, cow clones, uh, embryonic growing and artificial wombs. I thought the clones started in about 1990. This admits they were doing it in the 60s. Dr. Peter Beter was appointed by President John F. Kennedy to serve as the general counsel 
for the Export-Import Bank of the United States. In 1979, long before Dolly the Sheep, he indicated cloning research was actually far ahead of what the public had been led to believe, stating that many animals had already been successfully cloned. Then, of course, there are clones, that is, creatures which are reproduced by artificial means and which are exact duplicates of an original. Clones of all kinds of animals have been produced successfully in the laboratory, but that is not what bothers people. In the recent past, it has been claimed that human clones are also possible and that some may already be in existence. These last claims about human clones have been ridiculed, denied, and suppressed by all kinds of officials. Also in 1979, Robert McKinnell, professor of genetics and cell biology at the College of Biological Sciences, University of Minnesota, wrote, it has been reported that mice and some large domestic animals have been cloned. Because the reproductive biology of humans is similar to that of mice and other mammals, it is likely that humans could be cloned. If statements like this were being made in the late 70s, what advancements might they have today? It's just a straightforward procedure. This is not, not something real complicated. They've been cloning all kinds of mammals don't you think that they have the ability to clone people? Technically, to clone a person is no more complicated than it is to clone a cow or a pig. It's, it's, there's a few little differences in the steps, the procedures, but as far as compli uh, complications, it's just as easy. And I'm going to suggest to you that the Illuminati not only have the motive to uh, clone, but they have the means. And if they have the motive and means, what's that mean? It means that they're doing it. Since then, human cell cloning has helped the study of diseases like Parkinson's, but cloning humans would simply be unfair. Clone of a major baseball player, you'd expect that child to be a baseball player. He might not want, he might want to play soccer. Are we really to believe that the shadow government and Illuminati are restrained by ethical boundaries? In 2012, villagers in the south of Russia stumbled on a gruesome discovery. Biological waste barrels were found containing 248 human fetuses. The mystery surrounding the source of the children's bodies led to conjecture by police and medical officials, with some experts speculating they had been the result of a top-secret Russian cloning project. But as RT's Sean Thomas found out, some experts think the fetuses could even be the product of cloning. We do know that uh, all of the fetuses that are in question here uh, were terminated between 22 and 26 weeks. This is well past the 12-week mark, which is considered legal abortion in Russia. Uh, and after 22 weeks, uh, women can only have an abortion only for medical necessary reasons. So uh, is this an illegal abortion operation or is this scientific research? Uh, no one really knows. They're trying to get to the bottom of that. We talked to one uh, medical doctor. This is what they had to say about the subject. This looks like some sort of thriller where organs were removed from fetuses to extract essences that theoretically can be used to rejuvenate people. It may sound a bit fantastical, but these fetuses could have been the product of cloning, despite its universal ban. And that's why they were thrown out like that, since these were not future human beings, but half-human, half-artificial creatures. One of the most common motivations for cloning is for replacement organs. Theoretically, a clone could be created from which healthy replacement organs could be harvested with the exact same DNA. Now, the reason was that our scientists were all excited because we could have spare parts. If you need a heart or a liver or anything, you won't have any rejection. It's your own DNA, right? Okay. What if somebody were to create a carbon copy of themselves just simply to have some spare parts? If your heart goes or your lung fails, well, now you've got an exact copy that should be able to get implanted right into your body and you're good to go. Such a scenario is depicted in the 2005 thriller The Island. You're clones. You're copies of people out here in the world. What? Clones? 
What? Copies of what are you talking Why? about? Why? Some hag trophy wife needs new skin for a facelift, or one of them gets sick and they need a new part. They, they take it from you. But why celebrities? There are many reasons why an entertainer might be a top choice to be cloned. Entertainers are themselves valuable commodities, earning mega millions for their record companies and studios. However, if they decide they want to quit or something tragic happens to one of them, studios stand to lose considerable investment. Replacement clones are easier to control and manipulate, attracting less attention than an outright assassination and allowing the owners to regain control and continue earning money. The Illuminati are said to have cloned many celebrities. Where's you ever a met a clone? This is, this is a one Have I met a clone? Yeah, I think I met some clones before. See? Really? So there's clones amongst us. The rapper Gucci Mane was sent to prison for possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. But it was his return less than three years later that sparked controversy among fans. Not only had the rapper lost a considerable amount of weight, but his speech and mannerisms seemed to have changed as well. Who just told me? Yeah, we gotta get you in. Two gangsters. Keep this crap. What do you want for lunch for today? Just fruit, veggies, and water. That's like. it? Very light. Okay. I wanted to go light but excessive. Oh. Clean but opulent. Some even speculate that people from the past are being cloned and brought to life again as leading actors or musicians. Such theories point to the uncanny resemblance some stars show to figures from the past. Talent can be hard to come by. Imagine a world where legendary musicians or artists could be brought back to life. What would a modern day Mozart create? Obsessed collectors will pay ungodly amounts for memorabilia owned by their favorite stars. But the ultra-wealthy could have the real thing brought back to life for their amusement. The elite have fiendish desires. If, for instance, one fantasized about a particular starlet, they could have a clone of them made as a sex slave. Politicians could be using clones as doubles for speaking events, etc. Having body doubles and lookalikes has long been common for world leaders. Also, if a genuine candidate was elected president and didn't acquiesce to the shadow government's control, he or she could be replaced with a clone under MK Ultra mind control. Several celebrities have tweeted about human cloning or cloning centers. Others seem to be giving cryptic references in songs or music videos. Through the mass media, the shadow elite seem to be conditioning the public to the idea of cloning. Several movies and television shows seem to be hinting at the existence of human cloning. One such show is The Simpsons, a sitcom already known for predictive programming and the use of seemingly inside knowledge. And Family Guy, in which Stewie makes a clone of himself called Bitch Stewie. I needed some kind of an errand boy to do all my nitpicky pain in the ass stuff, so I cloned myself. You... you cloned yourself? Were you deaf? What? The New York Times recently revealed that Barbara Streisand had cloned her beloved dog. The fact that pet cloning is now available for those willing to pay 50 grand raises the likelihood that in the near future it would be possible to actually pay for human clones. Could it be the New York Times story was done to gauge the general public's reaction to the prospect of cloning and the various ethical issues it raises?